Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share my experience of studying in Switzerland. So if you are interested, continue watching. My name is Lisa and I moved to Switzerland, in particular to Zurich, for my master program. It was almost 10 years ago, but I don't think things have been changed too much, so I want to share my particular experience in this video about studying in ETH Zurich. As I said, I moved to Switzerland for my master program and I decided to study at material science department. The program was in English and I moved from Moscow, where I studied at Lomonosov Moscow State University, also at the department of material science. So it was pretty smooth transition. How exactly I moved, I will probably let you know in the coming videos later on. But today let's focus on the master program itself, what it included, what was my impressions and of course the cost. When I moved to ETH to study, I was really surprised that I can choose basically my program by myself, combining various disciplines and also subjects that I want to study. There was a pretty large catalog of courses provided to us where we could search for those most relevant and interesting. I know that nowadays there is actually one semester that was added and it contains compulsory courses that you anyway have to take. In the past it was not like this, uh, you could really freely design your master program. I should say that the approach probably also depends on the department you are going to study, but in general rules are more or less the same. At ETH there is a really nice course catalog where you can see all the relevant information about the courses course description, when does it take place, um, where does it take place, because the campus is pretty big, so there are several buildings you might need to visit for one or the other course. Also from this course catalog you can know in advance if exam is gonna be before Christmas, if we are talking about winter session or after Christmas, but I will come to it in a few minutes. Apart from the courses that you select from this course catalog to collect enough credits that is required by the program, at my faculty in material science department I had to make two projects, two scientific projects during the master program and also write a master thesis in the end of the program. It took me two years to finish my master, but basically you could do it a bit faster. There are some people who do it in one year and a half and you could also in principle extend your master program after three years. Depending on the workload you choose for yourself every semester and in general it depends on how much successful you are and how good you are with your exams. Each semester you have two weeks in the beginning of semester where you can freely visit any lecture at ETH Zurich just to see if you like the sub if you like the lecture or not and only enroll afterwards. So normally the two first weeks of the semester you spend defining the subjects you are gonna take. During these two weeks you can get familiar with the program or one or the other lecture, get to know the professor, understand how you like the way he or she present the information if you are interested in the subject and finally you decide if you want to take this lecture or not. Also for me it was always important to know when the exam is gonna be because if I would take you know like five to ten courses and every course would end up with end of semester examination, what means the exam would be before Christmas, then it's pretty huge workload in the end of the semester because it means that I would have almost every day one or two exams. You should understand an end of semester examination is actually not much easier than um, exam during this um, exam session. 
that normally takes place after the Christmas holidays in the winter or even after semester break during the summer. So uh, me personally, I prefer to distribute a bit the load, not to take all the exams during one week, but to have a couple of them after the break, so that I could prepare myself better and get a higher notes. Also, it's just an interesting fact that in this course catalog lecture description you can see if you are gonna participate in any lab sessions. And uh, you know, in Moscow, at the department where I was studying, lab sessions was really a nightmare. I mean, you had to prepare so much for this kind of activity that I was trying to avoid taking lab session here as well. But actually, the organization of the lab session in ETH is completely different to what I used to have in Moscow. Because here you don't need to actually take a small exam before starting this lab session. It's more like a demo session. All, almost all the sessions I had here was designed in order to motivate the student to study more, to get the curiosity and to show new exciting things. In Moscow, at Moscow State University, it was a little bit different because there we had to prepare for the session and then were examined before actually doing the lab sessions by ourselves. So we had to get uh, some kind of allowance to perform the session by ourselves, which is on the one hand is also good because part of the program you f you are forced to learn during the semester simply by preparing to such lab sessions but also i tell it was quite stressful if because if you don't pass it means you can't do this lab session and then to arrange another appointment with the teacher is pretty tricky but you don't need to do it in eth at least at material science department uh, it was always not a question. You just basically come and enjoy the program. So indeed, during the semester, during the master program, it is quite easy uh, to study, I would say, because you are not um, obligated to go to the lectures. You go freely. Um, you don't have really small examinations during the semester. You might have, but it's really rare. But in the end of the semester, when you have to prove all your knowledge for each of the subjects, it becomes extremely difficult and you could feel the pressure. At least this was how it was for me. Because in the end, as I said, it could happen that you might have even two exams during one day. So you really need to study during the semester in order to be able to get, a, to get a good note for your exams in the end of the semester. Just uh, I'll tell you a few words about study materials, how it was everything organized. Basically for every lecture you attend, almost for every lecture, you would get um, a PDF with all the slides uh, the professor is going to present during the lecture so you can print them in advance and come to the lecture with a printed version making there some notes um, probably writing down some questions or any information you like and this is pretty convenient because you get basically the idea already before the lecture what to expect so you can prepare yourself better for what is coming up. In rare cases, at least in my case, we could get also a script, so basically like a real book with all the topics explained during the course. But normally it's just a compilation of slides that are gonna be presented, so you have to add your additional notes in order to remember or understand what's going on. What I also liked about the program that many professors had experience in industry. So what they tried to bring us up is not was not just poor theory of that you could basically read in the books, but also their personal 
experience, different case studies that was that were discussed and analyzed together, and this all really add up value. It's not only raise your interest for the subject, but also you can really deep and better understand why you are learning one or other theory or fact and how you can apply it in practice. If you fail the exam, normally you have one more chance and then if you don't pass during our master program it was not a big deal because you could just take another subject to have enough credits in the end or even if you don't want to retake the exam you can just try to pass the exam only once and simply after failing it uh, just count for extra credits for the next semester so there you really have a freedom retake an exam or not but it would not work with these compulsory subjects i mentioned right in the beginning because these compulsory courses you have to attend and you have to pass in the end but if you are interested about the real situation, like real program, I would gladly film it for you. So just let me know in the comments down below which faculty is the most interesting for you. Because as I said, it might all differ a little bit between departments. A few words about the project. So, as I said, I had to do two projects during my master program. One I did in one of the labs of ETH and another one I did in industry. And the good fact of doing the project in industry, for example, apart from gaining new experience, so you're a little bit uh, away from academia, but normally you also get paid. This is a really nice bonus, especially when you're a student. Because if you do your project in one of the labs of ETH, then you do it as part of your study, so of course you don't get any money for it. Master thesis in the end normally takes around six months, as I said before, and basically you can also do it in collaboration with industry, or you can stay in ETH and do it there. In the end, you have to defend your master thesis, so I did a presentation in front of the group, where I did my master thesis and this counts as an exam, as a final exam. Also, if you thought about exams, there were oral exams and written exams and for me it was always easier before to take written exams because, you know, I got really nervous when it was oral exam and you have this face-to-face -face contact and so on, but on practice, written exam for me in ETH was much, much, was much, much difficult, more difficult, because there are so many questions you have to answer that I simply always was lacking of time to complete it. So you really need to be very well prepared for your written exams, of course for oral exams as well, but there you're not that in a hurry, I would say. What about the cost of the master program? So, as far as I know, the price went a little bit higher, but nevertheless, it's something around 1200 per year, what you have to pay for your program. And I find it pretty cheap because, um, for example, in Moscow, if you have to pay for your education, then at my faculty, it would be three times more, for instance. But there we had completely different uh, system. You could, you can also study for free, and that's what I did uh, for my bachelor program in Moscow because I had the uh, high notes at school, so I could benefit from free, from free education. Actually, here everyone uh, has to pay unless you get a scholarship. But I'll tell you about the scholarships in the future. So. If you are interested in the topic, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and we see each other very soon in the new video. Bye!